TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy November Part 2. Yeah. Uh, well, With your hosts, Pablo the, Gunner and the Ambassador. Uh, Slay J wasn't able to make it for Part 2, so we're doing it uh, right now for you. Yep. So we're going to be reviewing Invincible Season 2 Part 1. Yeah, Season 2 Part 1. And Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim takes off on Netflix. Yep. So let's jump into it, starting with Invincible. Yep. And my usual complaint with these is, if you're going to just start doing parts, just call them different seasons or release it together. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing, too, is like, because it was called Season 2 Part 1... I really wasn't expecting much, right? Yeah. And but they delivered. They delivered like that ending, that cliffhanger ending, and just like that whole last episode was mind blowing. Now the first episode is actually, and I read, and I might go de- uh, more in depth on on this on my own, which is the whole first episode of the new season. That's the entire volume two. So they mashed all of volume, well not all of volume two, but what happened in vol- in volume two, they littered that story throughout, right? Throughout each issue. But in this one, they just mashed it all up into one episode, which was the, what the guy with like, he has the brain, like the messed up brain. And then the Mahler twins, you know, built that crazy machine for him. Yeah. And I, so I was per- personally, I was disappointed that they mashed it all into one episode because I liked the subtle build to it in the comics. Which you can do with comics because it's comics, right? You yeah. can be subtle. With with shows, you have to be more... It's kind of like the whole manga anime issue, right? Which is they take out a lot of the filler, a lot of the character growth and development. And then they just put all the action in. And then that's all you get. And you're like, where's the growth? But then when you read the manga, you're like, oh, okay, here it is. Right? Yeah. Which they... I'm not saying they took out the character growth... But they did, they just made it more fast paced, right? They're like, they just packed it all into one thing. And the rest was, the rest was really great too, but it was really kind of like that first episode and then the last episode were easily like the best bookends as they should be because it was pretty mind blowing. Like Monarch, it was weird seeing his dad like make out with a bug person though. Like, I don't know why it's always weird to see like, a humanoid person like making out with like a bug person like which is funny because like their kid looked normal except they were blue you know yeah <laughs> you think they would have looked more insectoid or at least had some attributes but man that fight was epic it was so awesome it was crazy it, it did not go how i expect and honestly i think i've read up to volume five and i don't remember any of that stuff there is a graph that I found on Reddit that shows you the issues that they cover and it like goes all the way up to like 42 or 52 or something like that. So that they cover within this part one. And they and that's the thing is they jump around. You know, uh, Kirkman, when he redoes or when he does, well, when he redoes one of his works, he likes to change things around Yeah, and be like, what could I have improved? What can I do different? Like if I could have done different and then that's what we get. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And it's working so far. Yeah. And it's working so far and he seems to still have a say in it. So that's good. Yeah. The uh, voice acting is top notch. Like I'm digging like all the characters. It's, it's pretty nuts. I'm interested to see where it goes for sure. Like I'm like, I'm kind of annoyed. Well, not annoyed, but I'm just like, man, I cannot wait. Highly anticipating the next part yeah, did you watch the uh, in between episodes? The Adam was, Eve. Yeah. Yes, I saw the Adam Eve, and that was so it was good. Really good. And and that, like, for example, that was way better than the comic because they did like in volume two they did singles about each character that was part of the Guardians, right? Like the new yeah. Guardians or whatever. And honestly, those stories in comic were kind of weak. But then when they did like hers, and I hope they do more of those. That when they did hers, like, it was so much better. And she's great in the show, too. Like, I like how they're just, uh, they're looking more into that and stuff. It's, it's, yeah, pretty, it's it, pretty solid. Yeah, it explains why there's that tension between her and her parents. Mm-hmm. Even though 
I don't know if the parents completely know everything. Right. Like, I... Because you never see her actually tell them, like, I'm not your child. Yeah. I was uh, switched to protect me. Yeah, yeah. Because only... It seems like she's the only one that really knows that that's alive. Well, like, if that's... If they were... If she was to tell them, I feel like then they would... Cut... Ties completely. Right, because the, the way that they are, if they found that out, they'd be like, well, you really aren't ours then, so they're really, this all makes sense, and there really is no reason for it to have you around. But the other nice thing about it is it sets up some future arcs they can do as well, because it already shows, like, yeah, Earth does need protecting, but at the same time, there's militant people that are corrupted. Here that are gonna try to cause more issues than they help. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that's the thing too is that just watching that, you go like, she can literally change things on a molecular level. And there's that one point where she can she breaks her programming, and you're like, she could do that to people, and that's crazy. Like if she can unlock, like when she decides to unlock that and go that point, like what she could do, you know, like even with that guy, like she could have stopped that dude, like that. Yeah. You know, and she wanted to prolong the fight and she's realizing the error of her ways too, I think. Is she's like, I need to do more work, you know, like if I would have done my research, I would have known that that place was condemned for reason, right? If I would have done, you know, if I wouldn't have been so, you know, just wanting to fight, I would have been I would ended the fight right away cuz she can, you know. Yeah. So uh, so it's great seeing her character growth and I, and I'm looking forward to see more of that. Uh, I, I, I just think it's so funny cause I was also rewatching the first season of like how they do the invincible, like how they introduce the show, you know, like when they do the intro, he's going to say his name and then it goes to the screenshot as well as like, they go like, Oh, that's a little optimistic. Like <laughs> I want to make sure that this says like invincible. That's a little optimistic because it's. Because that's like everybody just beats him up, but he hasn't been killed. So it almost, you're like, is he invincible? Like, he's not indestructible, but is he invincible? Because there are also moments where, like, he just unlocks some sort of power that I don't even know his dad is capable of. Where, like, it's some sort of blast or something, and it knocks people off their feet, right? Like, he's done that in the first season and now in, in the second, too. Well... I don't think they mentioned this in the show, but in the comics, he, the dad mentions that when they mate with other races, their offsprings are sometimes more powerful than themselves. Oh, well, he did say read my books, but that's the only clue he gave. But yeah, he did not. I don't remember him saying that in either of the seasons. So that's that. That'll be really cool to discover, right? So yeah, Which, it's better not to say it because then. In the comics, you already kind of had that in the back of your head. Right. With this one, you don't. Right, and that's like another one of those things like Kirkman can fix or like be like, now we're going to play this set subtle, these things not so much, but yeah. And but the, the thing they really helped was with this one, they've really helped develop the father's character better mm -hmm. because uh, if you know where the father more or less ends up in the comics versus how he is right now in the show, mm -hmm. the the changes they made to him make more sense. Okay. Because, like, the... Spoiler alert, the father isn't completely evil. Right. Like he appears to be. Right. Well, I mean, he's even said that. He's like, why do I care? Like, they're literally insects. You know? Because if he didn't care, he wouldn't have ran off like he did. Mm -hmm. He would have just finished the job. Yeah. But instead, he ran off. So yeah, it's it's he's a complicated, complex character, and, and it's yeah that'll be another thing that'll be cool to to discover. So I loved it. I think it's great. I can't wait for the next one. I think it's a strong like must see, strong it's must, a must watch. stream, must yeah. You have to like even if you don't have Amazon Prime, get it, watch it for this. That's where it's on Amazon Prime Video, and watch it just for that. Yeah. Definitely, it's a must-watch, even if you just get a month to watch it and then get rid of it. Now, was Scott Pilgrim Takes Off worth it? Let's talk about that. Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, that was 
something else. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really is something else because it's not like the movie and it's not like the manga. I well, the, it's a pseudo sequel to the movie. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, because it's a, uh, basically an, someone meddling with the past to try to make their future better. Well, the the whole fact that it's called Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, to me, doesn't even make sense. Yeah. This show should have been called Ramona Takes Off. Yeah. Because this show is about Ramona. It's 100, it's almost like only the beginning and the very end even have Scott Pilgrim in it. And so everything else is Ramona. And I love that we got to venture her backstory and her relationship with these with the exes with these other characters and we got to discover more about them and that was really cool to get like the their side of the story too so i love that like even lucas lee like the reason he does it he becomes this like pro skateboarder and everything but she she broke with it up with him and everything just like how it really all makes it makes way more sense doing it this way and i like that they all gave us something different i just wish i would have known up front but like I said, if you would have changed the the title of the the show, I would have known and wouldn't have expected something else. Loved the animation, loved the music. You know, the story was interesting, weird, different. It's Scott Pilgrim. It is very Scott Pilgrim. So yeah. if you love Scott Pilgrim, you're gonna love it. Yeah, it's a re really good story, and definitely takes a lot of changes. But I do feel if you haven't seen the movie. Probably a good idea to watch the movie before watching the series. Yeah, I mean, I say read the manga because I love the manga and the manga is phenomenal. And yeah, that's like but, the... but like the references are tied with the movie. Yes. So that's why, that's why I say see the movie because it really helps right. to understand the show and the references they make to what's supposed to be the real reality. Like, even my wife, she didn't want to watch this. She had no interest because she was like, I've already seen the movie. I don't need to re-watch it in an animated version. And then I was like, well, it's... And, and I told her because I heard it from somebody else, actually, someone that we know. Uh, I think they're called Ameramedia, one of our uh, collaborators or, or partners or whatever, you know, um, networkers. And they talked about it and they were like, this isn't the manga, this isn't the, the movie, this is something different. And I went, okay, cool. And I told my wife that and she was still like, yeah, she just was like, no, it's going to be the manga. And I'm like, it's not the manga, it's something different. And uh, so the little that she did watch, I think she liked, but that wasn't enough because they didn't, they didn't really sell it right. Yeah. And it was definitely interesting to see... Matthew Patel in a new light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to, to just see all the characters that didn't get much, uh, you and you saw that in this. And that's why, like, it was a huge improvement to me. I really liked it. And I think it's for anybody that's in a hardcore... I mean, I wish everyone would watch this because I love Scott Pilgrim. But if you're definitely into Scott Pilgrim, it's definitely for you. So that's... For those people, it's obviously, like, a strong must-see, you know... Even if you hate Netflix, <laughs> get it. Especially now, completely understandable. But um, get it just for that, I think. Yeah, I think it's worth watching. And and I suggest more people check out Scott Pilgrim. So I like, even if you don't, check it out. Get all things, because Scott Pilgrim, I love all that stuff. So just get everything Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, I, I think I think it's a must watch. And I think, I think it's worthwhile... Just, uh, I would recommend watching the movie, which is on Netflix as well right now. Yeah. So it's a perfect time. Perfect pairing, yeah. So, all right, cool. Um, Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising? Come, I'll show you. Open up this door. <laughs> Come, walk this way. Take a look. We put the picture's name on everything. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. Spaceballs the t-shirt, Spaceballs the coloring book, Spaceballs the lunchbox, Spaceballs the breakfast cereal, Spaceballs the flamethrower. <laughs> the kids love this one. 
last but not least, Space Balls the Doll. Me. Well, we are sporting some of our merch here. I got the Talk Nerd to me finish the them Mortal Kombat stuff. Uh, Slay J and I came up with this idea. He's the one that designed it. And and I have my info on the back. But yeah, don't get the white. It gets messy really easy. It looks good. These things are actually really tight though. This is a medium. So if you're if you're gonna get one of the these specifically, go with a large with the larger size, size. Like I'm fine with it, but when I take it off, my shirt also comes off. So like that's how tight it is. So as long as I'm not taking it off, like when I'm in the gym or like finished with my workout or whatever, fine. The dudes in the gym don't mind because I work out super early in the morning when there's nobody there. Uh, but um, just don't do it at the fine fitness yeah, or yeah. Uh, <laughs> fitness or. You might be Get in trouble. guest starring in a TikTok video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> that guy in a little coat. That guy in a little coat. Don't. <laughs> that guy in a little coat. That guy in a little coat. Take it off, dickhead. I'm serious. Richard, what's happening? Um, and then, of course, the ambassadors rocking the our uh, talking nerd in me design. That's the Ninja Turtles uh, with the Raphael color, uh, or you could just say the original color because yeah. they all originally wore the red, and that's what I love about that. Raph's the, the only one still rocking the red, but it fits him. But yeah, so you can find all of our stuff at tntmtheshow.com. and the talking nerd in me stuff. I I've, we've discounted, so it's a little bit cheaper than everything else. Um, and there's plenty of other stuff this month, uh, or, yeah, so, yeah. check it out. Talk Stay nerdy. nerdy planet Earth.